I call the meeting to order, if we could, please. Vice Chairman Fisher, could you lead us in an invocation? Yes, sir. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this beautiful day that you've given to us. And we ask you to be with all those that have been suffering from natural disasters in this country and throughout the world. And Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all those citizens that volunteer to serve in various ways in our community and give of their time and their services. And we also ask you to be with our fire and rescue people, our sheriff's deputies, be with them and protect them and their duties as they provide their safety services for us. We ask for your guidance and direction in our work this evening for the citizens of Frederick County. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> we stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which, which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Adoption of the agenda. Are there any proposed changes? No, sir. Um, Move to like approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve, adopt the agenda is second. presented. A second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. The agenda is adopted. Consent agenda. Are there any proposed changes? No, sir. So proposed would be tabs D, E, and I. How would the board like to handle that one? Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve the consent agenda as a submitted. Second. Motion to approve and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Consent agenda is adopted. This is a portion of the meeting that we set aside for citizen comments on agenda items only that are not subject to public hearing. Did anyone sign up? Um, yes, sir. Um, we have several people signed up, and some folks have indicated that they want to speak to taxes. Um, so I would remind those folks that your opportunity is at the public hearing. This would be on a topic not pertaining to the tax rate. Um, the first person I have is Pat Grosso um, with the issue budget tax. So if it's the tax rate, we have a public hearing in a little bit. Um, the second person is George Hughes on the budget. My name's George Hughes. I live in the Gainesboro district. <laughs> and I'm here to talk about the budget because the Bank of Frederick County, if I had to appraise the numbers that I've seen in the paper, would say, you're not bankable, folks. And then we're not failing to look at the fact that we're looking at another 25% increase for 2019 just to cover the increased debt service. We're, we're just, we're not looking far enough ahead. We're not looking anywhere. We, we have a whole big problem here, and the only other place you've got to raise money now is, is that you haven't tied your hands is personal property tax, and that's already paying. You pay uh, sales tax every damned year on your personal property, and that's an unreal number, too. So I think that the county needs to step back, and we got to decide what we're going to take. If you're going to keep giving away, you got to take something away because you're not bankable anymore. And that's all I've got. I, I just, I want people to stop and look where the hell we're headed. We're down, we're on the greasy slope. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next person is John O'Connor on taxes. <clears throat> Good evening, Chairman. Uh, members of the Frederick County Board. If we could, sir, name and magisterial district. Oh, Gainesboro District. Pardon me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I have no problem with your tax increase, unlike uh, my predecessor. Where I have a problem is why are we not going after those people who refuse to pay their taxes? And I'm not talking about the people that, that can't afford to pay their taxes. I'm talking about the people that are thumbing their noses at us we're talking 10, 15, even more thousands of dollars that, that uh, just basically refuse to pay, your tax, pay their fair share of the taxes. 
Um, I also live on Frog Hollow Road, and most of you probably would know who I'm, uh, some of these people are. Uh, but um, the bottom line is, if I pay my sh fair share of taxes, if I'm paying for these schools, these highway improvements, whatever the case may be, why are we not making everyone pay their fair share as well? That's all I have to say about it. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Ray Lanham for Brysa. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Chairman. Uh, my name is Ray Lanham. I'm uh, Gainsborough District. Uh, I'm also a volunteer of the Blue Ridge Youth Soccer Association. Uh, a year ago, I stand before, uh, stood before your board, and we came to you with a request for a conditional use permit for some property that we had purchased. Uh, there are two tracts of land that were at the corner of West Parkins Mill Road and Route 50. Uh, unanimously, you granted us that permit, and uh, our organization is, is grateful for the use of that property. I wanted to give you a brief update and uh, fill you in on a little, just a little bit why I'm here tonight. As an update, uh, our organization, uh, nonprofit organization, has been deep in planning for this uh, property. We are uh, both planning uh, for the development of it. We've done some uh, site drawings. Um, we're going back to get approval for those. Um, and recently, we had requested uh, through the appropriate application to be considered for property tax exemption for that property. Um, that application went to the Finance Committee, uh, and you'll find on the notes tonight, Finance Committee notes, that it was on there, it was non-actionable. We had a uh, error, which I apologize on our end, that we didn't realize we were supposed to be in the Finance Committee meeting to, to state our case and position for that. So once we found out about that, we uh, automatically got in, in touch with some folks, and we are on the next Finance Committee meeting, March 15th, so we're going to plan on being in there for that, but you will see that note on the Finance Committee uh, notes. The, um, we are uh, essentially we're our organization is privately funding a state-of-the-art soccer complex that'll be utilized by what we think are all citizens in Frederick County. Um, we're looking at a first phase project that has a three-field turf plat. We're going to have lights. Uh, we think it'll be a great addition to what Parks and Rec already has. If you look around the community and all the different growth. Um, we need more places for our kids to play. That's what we're about, is giving the, the, the kids that option. Um, this is going to be a $3.5 million uh, first phase project to get us in there, get our improvements in there. This is all private money that we're fundraising. We have a business plan. We try to hold tournaments. We're going to do everything we can to do to get some money for this. Not to sound cliche, but every penny counts. So we are respectfully asking uh, the members of the board and the Finance Committee, that be it actionable tonight or at a time in the future, near future, that you uh, respectfully look at and potentially approve our, our request for tax exemption on that property. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Jay Martz regarding the Finance Committee. Hi, I'm Jay March from the Gainesboro District, and uh, what he said, I didn't know Ray was going to be here tonight to speak about that on the Finance Committee, but I happened to attend the Finance Committee, and my son used to play soccer for that organization. What they're doing is wonderful over there, getting their own land, building these soccer fields, taking it out of the government sector, putting it in the private sector, so I hope you will reconsider and give uh, Bryce that uh, property tax exemption. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's the last one, Mr. Chair. All right. Moving on, Board of Supervisors comments, are there any? Okay. Uh, minutes of our regular meeting of January the 11th, 2017. Would the board like to handle these? Let me move for approval as submitted, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second, is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. <clears throat> The minutes of our regular meeting January 11, 2017 are approved as submitted. Our budget work session of February the 1st, 2017. Make a motion for approval, Mr. Chairman. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. The minutes of our budget work session on January the 1st, 2017 are approved as submitted. Brings us to committee appointments. Uh, 
I'll be there in just a moment. There we go. Conservation Easement Authority. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, <clears throat> make a motion to reapprove Ron Clevenger to the Conservation Easement Authority. A motion to approve reappointing Mr. Ron Clevenger. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Mr. Ron Clevenger is reappointed to the Conservation Easement Authority. It's a three year term. Social Services Board, member at large. Mr. Chairman, Chairman is liaison. Um, I do not have anyone. Mrs. Martin's in attendance at her last meeting this month. Uh, we certainly appreciate her service and her willingness to serve and the time and effort that she has put in in that capacity. But I do not have anyone who has stepped forward and said they would like to serve at that this time. But I am certainly looking for volunteers. <laughs> so let's let's continue to work. And any anyone that had any thoughts or any interest in serving, please let us know. Um, that will bring us to the additional resolution for Shawnee Canning Company under tab C. Welcome, Mr. Barker. Good evening. Uh, what you have in front of you is to simply the, the proper paperwork to appropriate the money from the state for the Shawnee Canning. When you voted on this previously, we omitted that one by accident, so we're just trying to put the paperwork back in order. Any questions, Mr. Barker? Thank you, sir. Welcome. How would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, move for approval of the resolution for Shawnee Canning Company. Motion to approve is our second. Second, Mr. Chairman. And the second. Is there any discussion? Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Mm -hmm. That will bring us to the Finance Committee report. Supervisor Slaughter? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The Finance Committee meeting was held on February the 15th at 8 a.m. There was also an Audit Committee meeting prior and a budget work session which followed. <laughs> Items number two, three, four, and five were approved under consent agenda, and I would so move. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any discussion? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. That takes us to item number one, and, and Mr. Lanham has already spoken to the board this evening. Um, the Blue Ridge Youth Soccer Association requested a real property tax exemption for land owned by the organization, and um, that there was some confusion and no representation at that meeting, and so uh, the committee forwarded to the board with no recommendation. Mr. Lanham has since been in contact with me, and we have scheduled um, for Brysa to be on the March 15th Finance Committee agenda. Okay, so we'll deal with that one at a future meeting. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, so that would take us then to item number six, and the sheriff requests a general fund supplemental appropriation in the amount of $64,220, which is a federal grant funds, and an interdepartmental fund transfer in the amount of $64,220 local share. These amounts represent the implementation of 120 deputy body cameras with a total cost year one of $128,440. Additional funds would be required for years two through five um, in the amount of the 64,220. The committee recommended approval and I would so move. So the motion to approve is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I would point out that um, the comments I made in the Finance Committee that I have full faith in our deputies, their training, their administration, and I still see this as somewhat of a knee-jerk reaction to some of the high-profile things that have happened around the country, and I do believe it is a solution in search of a problem, and I am concerned about the long-term cost of this and the minimal benefits of it, so I will not be voting for it. Understood. Further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I think that um, uh, the body cameras are 
are a good thing, uh, mainly because uh, in these days and times when everybody has a camera, uh, I think it's good for our folks to have one and record what actually is being seen. Uh, they're not taking snippets of the event, they're seeing the whole event. And that's what comes out in the community. When it finally comes out, that's what you get to see. Um, I think it will save money in us going to court uh, and in a lot of civil cases that we necessarily wouldn't have any, uh, any legal rights if we don't have some way to prove our point. So I'm in favor of it. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I'm going to echo Mr. Lofton, Supervisor Lofton's comments. Uh, if it was just a matter of buying the cameras, one-time expenditure, I think I could support it. But we're talking about a five-year expenditure of $64,000 a year, and I find that difficult to uh, justify. So I'll be voting against it. Anyone else? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, um, welcome to the world we live in. Uh, the sheriff was there and explained to us that we've already had incidents where the body camera immediately took away any discussion about what happened because it was plain to see. Yes, I don't like spending the dollars, but if you read the news nowadays, the liability issues, it's just, and we had a local incident a year or so ago, uh, I, I fully support this. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Supervisor Dunn. When the sheriff was making his comments before the finance committee, I was ambivalent. But his comment about an officer who had to shoot somebody after that person refused to put down a weapon and unfortunately was, ex was shot um, left an officer who had done his job with no way to protect himself if somebody accused him of something else. So I'm very sympathetic to Mr. Lofton's comments, but I think that to protect the sheriffs on the beat, I'm going to have to support this. Anyone else? Ready to vote? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? No. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Ewing? No. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. That takes us to item number seven. <clears throat> the sheriff requests a general fund supplemental appropriation in the amount of $70,495. This amount represents implementation of an electronic summons, e-summons system. No local funds are required, and this is basically to adjust the original budget um, from, from the 25000 that initially was appropriated. And the committee recommended approval, and I would so move. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And a second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, I had a conversation with the sheriff after that finance committee meeting, and he said that this money comes from five dollars that's charged for every ticket. He said that the money can only be used for this purpose. My concern is that the total cost of this is over ninety-five thousand dollars, and so I said to the sheriff that I would like to go and see if we can postpone this for a year, see if the legislature can change their change the law so this could be used for a best use. In my opinion, if the sheriff had $95,000, that could be better used for other items, such as an additional sheriff, vehicles, et cetera. So at this point in time, I'm not going to be able to support this. I think that if we can postpone this, let the legislature possibly change this, both Senator Vogel and Delegate Collins are on the appropriate committees. We know them both. I'd like to work through that angle uh, before I support this. Thank you, sir. Further discussion? Anyone? Ready to vote? Supervisor Ewing? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Nay. Supervisor Fisher? Aye. Supervisor Lofton? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. The last, last item, um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, was, uh, um, and I should have probably brought this up at the beginning because our auditor actually met at the beginning of our meeting, but I would also like to point out that uh, we have just had our audit for fiscal year 2016, and the opinion was clean from our audit. I would also like to commend staff for a job well done. The auditor, um, Mr. Foley, was most complimentary of staff and the effort of preparation and getting um, the audit materials for them. And, and I just think it bodes well for the fine staff that we have in, in the finance department. So thank you all so much. Thank you. And that would conclude my report, sir. Thank you. All right. That brings us to a uh, public hearing, proposed Reliance Road truck restriction, proposal to close Route 627 to trucks from I-81 exit 302 
to the Frederick Warren County line. Mr. Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. <clears throat> as, as I expect you recall from when you heard this out of the Transportation Committee, this originated as a request uh, for our partnership in, in this uh, truck restriction from Warren County. Uh, the section of Reliance Road in Frederick County is actually in pretty good shape. It's wider than it is in Warren County. However, as soon as you cross the Warren County, Frederick County line, it narrows significantly, becomes much more winding, and is much less fitting for trucks. However, you do have a uh, significant amount of truck traffic. Now, one issue that has arisen in past looks at this is the number of uh, legal overloads that you have on this, this roadway, specifically dump trucks to and from the quarry. And if you target those with the truck restriction, you've got no reasonable alternative route because they legally cannot use the interstate. So what's being targeted here are trucks in excess of 30 feet, trucks that are legitimately doing things like taking a shortcut over to inland port or uh, perhaps avoiding the scales as opposed to uh, those legal overload trucks. Uh, so as you know, the Transportation Committee considered this and has recommended approval, and you all did opt to send it to public hearing, and that's why we have it before you tonight. You do have a draft resolution in your packet, and I do have a map on the screen. In red, you see Reliance Road. The vast majority of that, of course, is in Warren County, the, the section that's not uh, sort of gray, I guess I, I should have highlighted that a little a little more harshly, but that uh, north uh, northernmost quarter of that red route is the portion of Reliance Road that's in Frederick County, and the green is the suggested alternative route for those trucks that exceed 30 feet. Which is Route 66. Yes, sir. Yes. Questions for Mr. Bishop? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bishop, on, on the truck traffic that's coming down there, um, there are folks that live along that road. Yes, sir. Who have deliveries uh, in trucks. Uh, well, Eagle trip. That's a, so uh, as long as the truck is making a delivery along that route, it's just the uh, through traffic is it what is you're saying. It's specific to through traffic. Okay. Uh, technically, not to get too far into the weeds, you could have... A, a business that regularly uses trucks right. that would be located within that restriction, yes. those would all be legal loads because the origin or destination would be within that restriction area. Okay. Same would be true for agricultural trips. This does not t target you know, your hay trucks and uh, that sort of thing. Well, he's getting, uh, this particular person has tractor trailers delivering equipment. And that's, and that's 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 still allowable. Load. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, I told him I thought it was, but I just wanted to be it rest is. assured. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Bishop? Anyone? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed truck restriction? Anyone at all? Anyone? All right, seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this? Mr. Chairman, as we've heard Mr. Bishop explain, and we learned at our last meeting, and after having taken another trip <laughs> through that road this past weekend, um, I certainly would support this, and I would move that we adopt the resolution to request no through truck traffic on Reliance Road from Interstate 81 to the Warren County line to be posted by the Virginia Department of Transportation. The motion to adopt the resolution of support is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. And a second. Is there any discussion? Anyone? Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. Aye. Supervisor Fisher. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Supervisor Ewing. Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Item number two is a public hearing, the notice of proposed real estate tax increase, County of Frederick. Ms. Gardner. Um, yes, sir. I'm going to um, read the content of the ad um, to make sure that I get all the detail correct. Um, the County of Frederick proposes to increase property tax levies. Uh, number one, the assessment increase. The total assessed value of real property, excluding additional assessments due to new construction or improvements to property, exceeds last year's total assessed value of real property by 8.4%. 
Number two, the lowered rate necessary to offset the increased assessment. The tax rate, which would levy the same amount of real estate tax as last year when multiplied by the new total assessed value of real estate with the exclusions mentioned above, would be 0.5532 or 55.32 cents per $100 of assessed value. This rate will be known as the lowered tax rate. Number three, the effective rate increase. The County of Frederick proposes to adopt a tax rate of $0.60 cents per $100 of assessed value. This difference between the lowered tax rate and the proposed rate would be .0468 or $0.468 cents per $100 or 8.4 percent. This difference will be known as the effective tax rate increase. Individual property taxes may, however, increase at a percentage greater than or less than the above percentage. Number four, proposed total budget increase. Based on the proposed real property tax rate and changes in other revenues, the total budget of the County of Frederick will exceed last year's by 7%. That's the ad. Thank you. <clears throat> Any comments? Questions from board? All right, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak concerning the proposed tax rate? Yes, ma'am. If we could have your name, Magisterial District, limit your comments to three minutes or less, please. My name is Pat Grasso. I'm in the Gainesboro District. Uh, I'm here to speak in support of maintaining the tax rate at 60 cents or recognizing that it is an effective tax increase due to the increase in the assessments. This uh, rate will allow the budgets to be fully funded or funded at a much higher level that will support the county services, um, while it also will keep our tax rate lower than many of the localities <coughs> around us, especially Winchester, which has a higher tax rate. Um, uh, as a retired teacher, as a retired Frederick County teacher, I am well aware uh, of the, the hard work that the staffs in the schools do. The uh, teaching and the support staff uh, have always worked very hard to provide quality education for our children. I'm also aware of the stress they're under. Their workloads have increased due to class size increases. They have also had uh, more expectations, higher ex expectations placed on them to achieve high pass rates of the S standards of learning. Um, this has led to, uh, add, add to this, the fact that the um, salary increases over the last several years have been very low. Uh, this has led to losing people over the mountain to higher salaries. Our, our sheriff's department has lost deputies over the mountain. Fire and rescue see people go over the mountain or have difficulty hiring quality people. All of this means that the people who are left behind who stay, the loyal ones and very you know excellent people who stay and make this community uh, their priority have extra work in order to mentor the new fee people that are hired. So I am fully supporting a, uh, an effective tax increase, number three, on the, um, the, the paper here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. My name is Allison Behan. I'm in the Stonewall District. I've done my research back to 1990, and the taxes here in Frederick County have been as high as 78 cents per $100 of assessed value in 1990, as well as in 2003 and 2004, the rate was 73 cents per $100 of assessed value. There have always been residents on a fixed income, just as there are now. It is part of being a homeowner. There is never a fixed tax rate when purchasing a home. Therefore, as a homeowner, you must adjust and calculate finances to compensate for the tax rate. We need the tax rate to increase to be able to adequately provide for this growing county and support the education and development of our youth who are the future of our community. I beg you to increase my tax rate. I will make the proper adjustments within my household budget to accommodate. Thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Thank you. 
Ms. Joy. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, member of the board. My name is Joy Kirk. I'm a resident of the Back Creek District, and I stand before you tonight as an individual. I want to thank the board for putting forward an effective tax rate increase to 60 cents. I would be standing here asking for a tax increase of 5 cents or more, but I know that option is off the table. Thank you for being willing to not go revenue neutral. I want to live in a community that is proactive, not reactive. I moved to Frederick County 22 years ago and became a homeowner when I married my husband in 2006. He's lived in our home for over 30 years. He purchased it for $55,000. We live in a small, modest home on two acres. We chose to live modestly because, like many families, we had to set priorities, and being able to provide college educations for our children was our top priority. We believe in the value of education. We also value knowing we have strong public services and police, fire, and rescue. Our community services, such as Parks and Rec, also make for a strong family-oriented community where people want to live, thrive, and move to. We get what we pay for, and as a growing community, our needs are ever-increasing. I support the effective tax rate increase to continue to provide the services we have as a community that continues to grow. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Brandy Hammond from Shawnee District. Um, I'm also here to support the effective tax rate increase. Um, and actually, I'd, I'd like to see it see it higher. I know that's not an option at this point. Uh, when we moved here almost five years ago, we were thrilled at the wonderful, what I consider discount we got on, on our home. Um, and recently I was thrilled with the reassessment to see that our, our value is, has gone up. And I understand that when your value goes up, your taxes go up. And I accept that. I don't need think we need to go revenue neutral. Um, I fear that by doing that, we will lose like someone already mentioned, quality teachers. We won't have the adequate funds we need for our schools, for our fire department, our police department, um, the roads and additions that need to be built with our growth, water and sewer systems, just to name a, a few. I want to feel safe in my community. I want to feel like we can maintain a good community. So please keep the, the tax rate where it is or increase it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mars? Chairman DeHaven, members of the board, I'm Jay March from the Gainesboro District. I'm here to speak to the proposed uh, real, pop, uh, real property tax increase. You know, this action follows the, the tax rate increase from last year, and both of these have exceeded the percent increase in population and inflation. I believe you must provide some measure of tax relief to the citizens of this county in face of the salary increases, pay raises that you provided last year and are proposing to provide again, again this year to our government employees. So please provide us some tax uh, relief. <clears throat> also, I'm uh, concerned about the trend of higher taxes, increased debt, expanding government, and rating our rainy day fund. We seem to be on this trend that those are four things that we're doing year after year. We need to break this trend and keep this county uh, a limited government lower tax county. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm Carrie Carmichael. I'm from Shawnee District. Um, I am in favor of this uh, increase or um, as it is the same tax rate but um, an effective increase. Um, I'm a parent. I have children in the Frederick County Schools. Um, I think this increase is important to maintain the quality of our schools and the quality of the education that they're receiving. Um, I support uh, raises for the teachers. Um, I think it's a fairly modest raise that we're talking about giving them. Um, and I think that uh, keeping the tax rate um, or increasing it a little bit will allow us to uh, keep the quality teachers that we need and not have them go to Loudoun County in search of jobs. Um, I also think that we need to um, keep the uh, fire and rescue staff and other staff that we pay from the county in our uh, budget. So I am in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hey, good evening. My name is uh, 
Mantle. Uh, Eric Peterson, I live in the Stonewall District. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members. Thank you for taking the time to serve as a supervisor on this board. I don't envy your tasks at hand, but I also believe that right now you have a real opportunity, uh, a real opportunity to continue to make Frederick County a vibrant and prosperous county rich in culture through an effective tax rate increase. I'm no stranger to service, compromise, or sacrifice. Every day I put this uniform on and I do so willingly to give my life for each and every one of the people in this room right now. Our country was built on sacrifice. In 1962, JFK said we choose to go to the moon and to do these things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. He put a timeline of the end of the decade to reach the moon to show the world that the United States is the greatest country on earth. We achieved that goal, but not without sacrifice or without cost. In World War II, our country achieved victory through unification and sacrifice of our citizens. We financed that war through increased taxes and war bonds. And again, we were victorious. If our country can achieve these great victories, why can't our board of supervisors and our school board work together in a creative way to achieve everyone's goals and keep Frederick County vibrant and desirable location for our families and businesses? If there is a dollar threshold that you have in mind, I would ask you to please provide it to the school board. As an elected official, you have a duty to work with other boards and committees in the county to find and suggest creative solutions. However, I have not seen that. I've seen good discussion here tonight on other topics, but with regards to many of the other topics, including the Board of Education's Capital Improvements Plan, I've seen no actions, no suggestions, and no recommendations. What more do you need from the school board and the citizens of the county to move forward on funding our schools and their desperately needed improvements? If your heart is not in keeping Frederick County great, I would respectfully ask that you resign your positions and allow someone who does want to keep the county prosperous to take your place. If your, county, if your heart is with the county, please reflect on the options that you've been given and make the best decision for our future and not just focus on the potential tax increases. It's an investment for our future and not just focus, uh, you know, again, on these tax increases, but it's an investment in our future, our state, and our country. If we don't act appropriately, we risk making Frederick County, Virginia, a small and irrelevant dot on a huge map. But thank you for your service yet again, and I do support the effective tax rate increase. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. It's moving. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Here. <clears throat> Again, I'm George Hughes. I live in the Gainesboro district. And I, I agree, I don't envy your jobs at all. And I personally don't understand really why somebody wants to get a whipping every twice a month <laughs> over things that you really can't do much about. But my real point is, is maybe we're looking at this budget thing from the wrong end. The way I just did some math here, and, and if we're going to get 1,700 kids, that's about 800 new homes in the county, and the median price is worth $300,000 on the tax rate, it means they're going to generate $1,800 a piece. That doesn't even cover the cost of one classroom, folks. So maybe what we need to do is cut off development until we can catch up with some of this stuff. We're building, we're building the ghettos of the next generation all over when we build townhouses and town crap everywhere on postage stamp lots with streets that don't go anywhere. I, everywhere I look, I see stuff that I think are counterproductive to the well-being of the county, and I really am concerned when we keep talking about, well, we'll just build another palace. I mean, we're not Putin. We don't have crude oil to pay for the bill. Oh, and we've turned down a lot of manufacturing and construction through the years that might have helped it because it didn't suit somebody's image. Maybe we need a new image. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Mike Bowen. I'm a resident of the Opecan District, and I'm here to support the effective rate increase in the county budget. Um, 
as a lifelong resident of the county. Um, you know, I went away to college and other pursuits for about 20 years of my life, but I came back to this area because I love this area. You know, I grew up here. Um, I don't want to live anywhere else. But there are so many demands year after year on the monies that we have that I see no way around um, uh, implementing the effective rate increase this time around. Um, uh, my, f my youngest child is finish finishing her last year at Sharando High School this year, and she's the youngest of our four. Um, but I, my concerns for our school system goes on. But it's not just the school system, it's, it's everything that, that, that surrounds us. I mean, in, in order for Frederick County to remain a vibrant, um, safe, and progressive community, we need this increase. And I will gladly support the county, schools, um, our, our county employees, um, you know, in, in my, my prayers, with my wallet, whatever I can do. I really do love Frederick County. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Michelle Meeks and I'm from the Stonewall District. Um, I don't have fancy statistics or facts. I mean, I am in support of the um, tax rate increase. The main reason being so that I said last time I was here that we moved here because I know that Frederick County schools are great schools because I worked in Frederick County schools as a teacher. Um, and now I can see that they are becoming overcrowded. And if we do wait the five years, they're, it's going to be outrageously overcrowded than forcing children into trailers. And as a mom, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and honestly, the trailers are not safe. We've all seen what has been going on in our country. Um, obviously, we would hope that nothing like that would ever happen here, but you cannot protect children in a trailer. There's no security system. There's no um, wall to keep them out. There's no police officer to protect them, and it's just dangerous. And I know that many of you have children, many of you have grandchildren, and the thought that they would be in a trailer when an intruder came and have no way to be protected should not be acceptable. And so that is the main reason that I support the tax increase. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Jason Trissetter from the Shawnee District. Um, first, Jason, each please. Each time I speak with you, I'd like to start by thanking you uh, for hearing from me and for everything that you do for our county. Um, I do support the effective tax rate increase, and it's my own personal opinion that, you know, government, regardless of size or involvement, exists here to, to give us as a community uh, guidance and to provide us with services. Um, and as you've heard tonight from both sides, people that do support, people that do not support the in-tax increase. I've heard a lot from either each both side that they're concerned with debt from our county. That seems to be a, a, a theme that comes across from both sides. Um, and I believe that you have before you a way to increase our revenue as a county without actually raising the tax rate because of the, the increase in, in our real estate assessment. Um, I think it help, it'll help with our, our, our county debt. And you have tonight seen so far more support than opposition for this. And I hope that you see before you with this decision tonight that you have an opportunity during an election year for some people to actually help with our increase in revenue without actually raising our tax rate, which again, as many people have spoken, keep us below a lot of the surrounding counties. Um, so thanks for, through, for your time, and I, I do support the effective tax rate increase. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone? <coughs> Anyone at all? Last call. All right, we thank you for your input. We'll close the public hearing. How would the board like to handle this one? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we adopt a tax rate of 66 per $100 of assessed value. 
Motion to adopt the 60 cents. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. That was by resolution. Resolution? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right, discussion. Um, yes, you, you will later have um, an opportunity to adopt all the tax rates, um, but you can vote on this one tonight. And just for clarification, it is real property. Right, right. Yep. Not just property. This one. Supervisor Lofton. Mr. Chairman, as we have heard, there are pros and cons. People wanting tax increase, people who don't want tax increase. I really do believe we have needs that we need to fulfill in our county as folks have said to keep it vibrant. However, my problem is I don't believe we have fully vetted what we currently do. I watched a program on Ronald Reagan the other night and one of his statements still rings true is the fact, uh, let me paraphrase it, um, I guess the definition of eternal life is a government program. So to me, I don't know that we have fully researched, vetted, and thought about what we do and do we need, still need to continue to do that and that's where I have a problem with um, raising this tax rate because we have not done as far as I'm concerned a thorough vetting of everything that we do to say do we really still need to do this could it be done by the private sector and if we did that then how would that impact our cost our expenditures and our tax rate we could still be a very vibrant community and I'm not so sure we would have to raise taxes or maybe not raise them this much. Um, so my vote will basically be in a protest of, I just am not comfortable that um, I have had the opportunity to look at, again, everything we do, how we do it, and should we continue to do it. Further discussion? Anyone? Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Ewing. Uh, I'm gonna reluctantly vote for the 60 cents. However, I'm going to fight during the budget process that this money go into a construction fund and not be used in operations. So that's my position on it. Further discussion, anyone? No, I th also, Mr. Chairman, I think we've talked about this in budget deliberations and, and, and one of the suggestions I had when we looked at the various scenarios as far as how we address our budget needs, we we know as a community that we have facing us capital needs of construction of schools at some point in the future, be it adding on to an existing school, renovating schools that are sitting idle, et cetera. And we, we set aside, we made an effort last year to set aside a million dollars which is just a small drop in the bucket of the cost that it's going to be to, to take care of some of these projects. We also know, and I met with the fire chief this week, that our community is faced with declining volunteers. The chief, he actually gave me numbers, I think it was well over 100 and some volunteers in 2015 that made a very small percentage of the calls to our community. In 2016, going from 100 and some volunteers, we now are at 70 some volunteers making, I, I wanna say 5% of the calls. So we know that our community is facing drastic changes, particularly in volunteers, we're facing changes in the needs of our schools, et cetera, so I am in favor I don't like a tax increase, and I'll be the first to tell you, but I do believe that we need to set aside the $4.3 million into a capital fund. So maybe it's not all used for schools, but, but we have an obligation to our community. We have deteriorating buildings, and we know that we have these facing us. So I would be in favor of the um, revenue neutral rate of it, it's... 60 cents, 60 cents, 60 cents, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Discussion? Mr. Supervisor Dunn. Mr. Chairman, I've wrestled hard with this. Today I had a couple of emails. One said, Mr. Dunn, you must absolutely keep the 60 cents and listed the reasons why. Another email said that you must absolutely not keep the 60 cents and listed the reasons why. 
At least in my community, there's some splits. When I walked in the room tonight, we had a work session, and I was undecided on what I was going to do, but that work session kind of just crystallized some things. Those that are on fixed income, those that are retired, last year had a 7% real estate tax increase. This is effectively another 8% real estate tax increase. And I've had people tell me that they would probably have to move out if that goes through. I've also had school teachers say, please raise my taxes, et cetera. And I'm cognizant of that. I made a solution. I made an offer to the, board of, or to the Board of Education, which you are not aware of yet, to try to find a middle ground on that. The economy has not grown in this community. In 2021-22, because of Navy Federal Credit Union and some others, we would expect the economy to grow. And as the economy grows, there's more tax revenue to deal with. Right now, for the next couple of years, the economy is going to be relatively flat. For those people that are retired or on fixed income or in the private sector, if you have a tax increase, they cannot go to their employer and say, my taxes were raised, please give me a corresponding salary increase. So trying to find some middle ground, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to suggest a rate of 58 cents. That would effectively be a 4.8 percent increase over the current rate. It's less than the 60 cent rate. On the three budget scenarios that we currently have, two of them call for money being used from the general fund of 3.6 and 1.8 million respectively, and the other $4.3 million is left untouched. Mrs. Slaughter has suggested that some of that go into a uh, construction or a capital projects in the future. I think that's a reasonable idea. I'm trying to split that difference and saying that some of that money should go back to the taxpayer. And so if this rate were effectively done, it would be a tax increase of 5 percent, not 8 percent. It would be less of a burden on those in fixed income. And I think it's a compromise. Some people have told me that their total rate will increase as much as 20 percent because their assessments increased that much. The average real estate, residential real estate, has increased about 11 percent. The average commercial real estate was six-point-something. So I'm sensitive to that. So therefore, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to amend. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry. We're in the middle of okay. a motion. All right. Wait a minute. If you want to make a motion to amend the prior motion, I can accept that. OK. Is that what you intended to do? Yes, sir. I may have misunderstood you when you started. So OK. You may go ahead with that one. So I'd like to make a motion to amend the resolution on the floor right now and have the rate 58 cents, not 60 cents. Supervisor Dunn has moved to amend the current motion to 58 cents. Is there a second? Second, anyone? I'm sorry, sir, your motion will die for lack of a second. Thank you. Further discussion on the current motion, 60 cents. Anyone? Are we ready to vote? Yes, sir. Supervisor Ewing. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Nay. Supervisor Fisher. Aye. Supervisor Lofton. No. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. The 60 cents will continue. Would you like to make a comment? Mr. Chairman, I apologize, but I need to uh, leave immediately. I have a personal issue that's come up. Thank you very much, sir. Excuse me. Our best wishes. <coughs> All right. Board liaison reports. Are there any? Anyone? Okay. Seeing none. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment to the board on any issue whatsoever. If anyone has anything at all they'd like to share with the board, if you'd come forward, uh, limit your name and magisterial district and limit your comments to three minutes, please. My name is Allison Behan, and I'm in the Stonewall District. First thing I want to address is Supervisor Dunn. I'm not sure who you think most of our employers are. But I can't go to my employer and ask for a salary increase because my real estate taxes have gone up. I want my taxes to go up, but I make adjustments in my household to accommodate for that. As a homeowner, we make accommodations. You are aware that the tax increase, excuse me, the tax rate is not a fixed rate. So you have to make adjustments based on whether it goes up or goes down. Um, the real reason for me to speak right now, um, 
Um, speaking in regards to the capital improvement plan, I urge all of you to take action. <clears throat> there, is, there is to be some sort of agreement made between the Board of Supervisors and the school board. You were, pre you were presented with three separate projects and have not taken any action on them. I beg you to move forward to a, a public hearing so we may be on the bond cycle, the bond cycle for May. These projects have already been delayed with the lack of action of the Board of Supervisors. Please do not delay our children the education they deserve in an environment that is not overcrowded or below standard. Our children are the generations and generations to follow are the future of our community. If we do not provide an environment conducive to modern learning, we are doing a disservice to these children. We are also setting that up, them up for failure. Again, I beg you to raise my taxes and move forward with the capital improvement plan. And I also ask why the Board of Supervisor has not gone forward to ask the Board of Education or tell the Board of Education what you are willing to do. You've m merely just taken no action whatsoever on these three separate issues or three separate capital improvement plans. You can easily provide them a figure that you're willing to work with so that they can go back to the drawing board and actually say, okay, maybe you're not gonna appropriate 32 million for an elementary school, but you'll appropriate 28 million. And then they can go back and say, okay, we can make some adjustments here or there, but you're doing nothing. I beg you to do something and move forward with something so that we have something to move forward for these children. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Good evening. My name is Mike Prosek, and I, uh, I live on a post stamp lot on a road that goes nowhere in the Stonewall District. Um, I want to start by just reminding this body of four of the core values that you established a few years ago. A government concerned with long-range planning that protects our rural heritage and directs its future growth through planned infrastructure. A government looks to the future and implements plans to ensure that the quality of life for future gener generations is preserved a government that emphasizes a quality education through a cooperative effort with the school board, a government unit based on honesty, trust, integrity, and respect that understands the importance of clear communication and a willingness to listen. So I'm here to present a petition. Um, we've got over 350 signatures on here so far. Um, support for the Frederick County Public Schools Capital Improvements Plan. We, the undersigned, pledge our support for the Frederick County Public Schools Capital Improvement Plan 2017 to 2022. We ask the Frederick County School Board to work in conjunction with the Frederick County Board of Supervisors to immediately find a viable solution for the overcrowding which is becoming systemic to the Frederick County school system. We acknowledge that there must be a balance struck between providing modern, state-of-the-art facilities while remaining fiscally responsible. We ask this collection of elected officials to work together to immediately address the construction of the fourth high school construction of the 12th elementary school, and for renovations proposed, proposed for Armal Elementary School without additional administrative delay. Although we recognize there are many services provided by the county, we believe that providing adequate ed educational facilities for our next generation and relieving the additional burden placed on our children by overcrowding the current school system is of uppermost importance. The survey is online, so it uh, provides for comments. So I was just gonna capture some of the comments. <laughs> We have two children at Stonewall for the last two years now, and I've seen firsthand how the overcrowding has affected my children emotionally and academically. We cannot sit idly by and watch our precious children placed in overcrowded classrooms or semi-permanent trailers out back. I don't have any school-aged children anymore, but I have had four that have graduated from this public school system. I understand the importance of great schools and for our children. Please support the school board in their proposal for the construction of schools. Thank you. New schools are needed to accommodate the growth in our county. There is no investment greater than the education of our children. Please, for the sake of the education of the children in our county, quit the bickering and delaying and build, our, build, remodel, repair, and fix whatever needs to be in our schools. I have no children in the school system, but agree we have to invest in our children. The capital improvement plan should be the top priority for both the county and the school board. It is time for everyone to start working together for our children's future. This would be an investment in our future, this county's future. We need to be prepared for the growth of our community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll leave this. I can leave it with Mr. Tibbs, if you would, sir. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir.
Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Ned Farnold, <coughs> excuse me, a resident of Stonewall District. We have a large family and over the years have had children in public, private, parochial, and our own home school. And we now have grandchildren and all of the above. By far and by any me measure, not just my opinion, the worst of these alternatives is government-run public schools. <clears throat> now in the midst of a dynamic time of change in pedagogical methods, our failing school board asked for unprecedented and absurd increases in both operating and capital budgets when enrollments are not growing. Your own forecasters say that our population growth, especially in Frederick County, will be retirees, not those with children. With a new administration in Washington, we may be on the brink of a change to real school choice. The kind of choice a free people in a free society should have. Couple that with the shift to internet schooling and zero population growth, it would be foolhardy for us to lock ourselves into a $120 million capital expenditure in our anticipated and poorly performing public system. These people who are asking for a 40% tax increase are the same ones who have admitted publicly, and I quote, we have no idea how to educate this generation for the global job market. Just say no. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Joy Kirk. I am president of the Frederick County Education Association and a resident of the Back Creek District. I stand here before you tonight asking you to take action on the capital improvement plan that was presented to you by the Frederick County School Board. The top three priorities were presented each individually. So action is not necessary on the three as a whole, but rather can be taken on each individually. When people began talking about the fourth high school, I became curious. Often educators are. And I found something on the Virginia Department of Education's website. It's called Guidelines for School Facilities in Virginia's Public Schools. And what I found there is that some of the questions people have been asking can be answered in this 83-page document. Why do we need so many windows? Why do we need so much daylighting? Well, actually, it's a recommendation from the Virginia Department of Education. Why do we have open pipes? Why are we putting things on the outside of buildings that children can write on? It's in the facilities guide that the building as an instrument of teaching. So practices that seem foreign to us who grew up with four walls and 28 or 30 desks, these are ideas that are being recommended by our own Department of Education as best practices today. And these are the methods that will help us teach our children for tomorrow. I encourage you to take a look at the Capital Improvement Plan, to listen to the citizens. I know you have a hard task before you, but our children are the future. We heard from somebody today who came back here, former student. We want our students to go off to college and we want them to return to Frederick County Public Schools and Frederick County community because it is the best and a wonderful place to live and grow and raise a family. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, my name is John Burge. I'm a resident of the Shawnee District. I'm a residential architect, a small business owner, a spouse of a Frederick County public school teacher, and a father of two. I've spoken here once before, and as I stand here again, I think, think I can say with some confidence that both opponents and supporters of the school's capital improvement plans have at least one thing in common, and that is some level of disbelief. Disbelief that after most of the items that we continue to debate have been part of this plan for nearly 10 years, here we stand at the 11th hour still arguing about the ifs and the whats. When it's well past time, we moved beyond the obvious and had some focused discussion on the how part of the problem. If you folks before me still have some doubts about whether or not overcrowding in the schools is an issue that needs immediate attention, I'm not sure what I can add to the countless testimonials from students and teachers that will make that any more apparent to you. In addition to those words, we have hard numbers that bear it out as well. 
At the beginning of the 2015 school year, the combined high schools had 110 students over capacity, and projections suggest there could be between three and 400 more in the next three years. Opponents of these plans point to these same numbers and suggest that we could get more trailers, add on to existing schools, or build an 800 student capacity school instead. More trailers is a ridiculous idea that fails to recognize the increased need for teachers and infrastructure, the subpar learning environment they provide, and the fact that these units are not typically purchased by the county but rented at very high rates. The idea we add on to the existing schools is similarly ridiculous in that it fails to recognize that James Wood and Sharando don't have the land area or vehic vehicular access possibilities to make any feasible additions economically sensible. The design professionals employed by the school board since the inception of these ideas ex have examined all the possibilities and determined they didn't make any sense. I don't expect everyone in the community to trust them, but I certainly hope you do. As for a new school, opponents ask, why build for 1,700 plus students when we only have to accommodate five or 600? And enrollment has been basically flat for the last eight years. But they routinely fail to mention that during the boom years of 2004 to 2008, the public school system increased enrollment by over 1,500 students in five years. If we were to proceed with anything besides a new school and have a similar period with a strong economy, we could all be back here in less than 10 years having the exact same discussion. Except at that time, construction costs will have increased and will have wasted potentially one third to one half of the current budgetary request on temporary fixes. This is another example of the foolish denial that these short-term strategies will ultimately cost us more in the long run. Opponents of the CIP often decry the effects increased taxation will have on those citizens who are on fixed income and demand that we each take some personal responsibility for our needs instead of relying on folks who don't directly use the services we want. First of all, I don't really like the term fixed income because it supposes that the rest of us still working for a living are blessed with some type of variable income that keeps pace with ever increasing costs of living. While my wife as a public school teacher has had a few modest pay increases during her 10 years of service, those have certainly not kept pace with the growing costs facing many families today. And many working individuals have not even been that fortunate and have simply been asked to perform a greater amount of work for the same stagnant pay. In this sense, we're all working with fixed or even declining income. But when incomes do change, it's in large part due to an increased consumer base, which in turn generates greater revenues for employers. Our changing incomes are dependent on growth within the community, and that growth is dependent on our ability to collectively provide the infrastructure to support and foster it. I recognize that many of the older citizens in our community do subsist on fixed streams like Social Security or retirement allotments, and that they've spent their lives working hard and paying into the bottom of this system, and they absolutely deserve to draw off the top when their time has come. But this depends on a well-educated base population that will keep paying into the bottom of the system. And personal responsibility for one's own needs doesn't magically end at some predefined retirement age. When I need to increase my income, I do it by working longer and harder. And I would suggest that as long as someone has a capable body and a nimble mind, they too have every opportunity to affect the size of their income. We should not now have to sacrifice the best interests of our children so that some individuals can rest on their laurels, however hard-earned, and depend on us so they can maintain st stability in this ever-changing world. Clearly, there are some in our community who cannot help themselves, and I would be open to a more progressive tax structure that acknowledges this. Yet here we are, still deciding if we need a school. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone? Last call. All right, we thank you for your comments. We'll Close the public comment portion. Board of Supervisors comments, are there any? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to uh, thank everybody that spoke tonight. Um, uh, there are heartfelt thoughts on both sides, I'm sure. I do want to say that I am a proponent of public education. I like Frederick County. There are places in other states and there are places close by where they don't have the best school systems in the world for whatever reasons. I certainly wouldn't want my children to go to school in those areas, but I'm very happy that uh, Frederick County is where it is, and I think the school board does an excellent job. I think the sheriff's department does an excellent job, and the fire department does an excellent job. We're very fortunate to live where we live. Um, I'm not demeaning anyone or their thoughts, but I really believe that we are working hard to work together. 
And I try not to take things personally, but I heard some comments that, you know, uh, you're bickering and you're arguing and you're not doing anything. And um, I will tell you that that is not the case. We're not bickering and we're not arguing and we're not not doing anything. Uh, every member of this board is working very hard. Every member of the school board is working very hard. It's not a simple solution. And we're trying to get there. And I, we are making leaps and bounds, and we're even had a better meeting tonight, I think, than we've had in the past. Uh, I understand your frustration. Please bear with it. Uh, I'm sure you have these same situations in your family where you think, I wish I could just solve this right now, but you can't, and you have to work at it, and you have to work hard at it. But the hearts of these people that stay here with me work very hard every day. This is not their full-time position, and they spend a lot of time, a lot more than anybody knows, working very hard, and they carry all these things home with them at night, as do I, and think about it, and not sleep, and worry about it, and discuss it, and have private meetings with school board members at our homes, at their work, and try to come up with solutions. So to say we're not doing anything, I take a little personally, we are. To say that we're bickering, we're not. And the school board's here tonight. You're welcome to speak to them afterwards. I, I think they'll substantiate that we're, it's not us against them at all. That's not what, how we see it. It's not how I see it. Um, but I thank you for your comments, and I thank you for being here. And uh, I appreciate everything everyone said. Thank you. Others? Yes, ma'am. Supervisor Slaughter. I would just like to say also that if it appears that there's inaction on our part, we are working very hard to try to come up with a solution that perhaps is a balance between both the wants and our needs and how we move forward as a community. So don't take that what you're seeing as an inaction on our part. As, as Supervisor Wells just stated, we are working very hard to try to come up with a solution. There are various analyses that we're doing on our side that perhaps that we can provide to the school side to say this is what we have to work with. We're trying to look out into the future to see where our debt will be if we do this and if we do that. We're looking at various scenarios. So. We are working on it, and again, it's not an easy solution, um, but, but we are trying, so. Thank you. Other comments, anyone? Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll, just, Roger I'll just echo Mrs. Slaughter and Mr. Wells' comments. Um, those of you that said that we need to go and address the three items that the school board has put up forward, we will. Uh, the chairman has said that we will have a session and we will work through that to either give a yes or a no uh, definitively. Um, Dr. Lamont had written to Chairman DeHaven and he made some comments. We're trying to work through together um, a solution that works for everybody. So I um, appreciate your comments. And um, you know, we can chat some more. This is not a right, wrong, good, bad. It's a, it's a, um, it's a game of, of, of what's possible, what's critical, and that sometimes differs in, um, in thought process. We're trying to reach the same, same goal, and we're trying to do that collectively. So we'll mm -hmm. see how this plays out in the next you know, month or two, because we will make a decision, yes, no on that. And if that does not fly, then there's gonna be some alternatives, but we're gonna work on it. If it does fly, you know, the issue is resolved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Any others? Then I'd ask for your help. Um, I have uh, received from the Greater Winchester Area Parkinson's Support Group a request to declare April as Parkinson's Awareness Month in Frederick County. If there are no objections from the board um, and if it won't conflict with other commitments already made for April, um, I, I would so, so execute that but I'm looking for input if anyone has any thoughts. If, if it doesn't interfere with anything any other time, I think it's a great thing. It brings awareness to a disease that we need to be yeah. cognizant very, very of. Very devastating to many families. Any concerns? Okay, I thank you and we'll move forward with that. Um, anyone have anything else? Supervisor Lofton? 
Motion to adjourn, Chairman. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, second. Mr. Chairman. And a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. We'll stand adjourned and we thank everyone for their participation and their input. Yeah,